Hey Buckaroos, we are back with part two of AC Radio Adult Contemporary with Gary Berkowitz. So if you have not seen part one, I suggest really you kind of go back. I have a link below. I think you should stop this right now and go back for link one and uh, and then you know watch that and then come for this one. Although either one, you're going to get an immense amount of value out of it because uh, you know Gary's just firing off things that are really specific and things that you can, you know, do, things that are actionable. So let's hit that jingle and get this show on the road. People aren't listening to the radio the way they used to. Um, uh, this is a debatable, a debatable thing, but in the 70s, back in the 80s, um, it was a different world. And, mm -hmm. and I really believe people used to actually listen to the radio. Uh, I think today, the way the radio is being used, they hear the radio more than they necessarily listen to the radio. And there's so many distractions out there. And there's, it, it's, I don't think anybody to stick with uh, the, uh, uh, Bon Jovi, if I played mm -hmm. You Give Love a, ba a Bad Name at nine o'clock in the morning, if I played it again at six o'clock, <laughs> I, I don't think anybody is going to sit there, you know, and say, oh, I heard that at, at eight o'clock in the morning because, you know, there's such a turnover mm -hmm. um, uh, like that. So uh, I, I'm a believer in tight. You know, I, I, I grew up on the Rick Sklar WABC, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, School of Broadcasting. And um, so I like tight. And, uh, you know, s some of my program directors like, like they stay up at night because it's it's so tight and and they tell me how it's repetitive and they're getting complaints and uh, and and whatever and i say well how many complaints are you getting oh two or three a week and i go yeah. okay you have a, you have a cum of two hundred thousand. so what what's what's the percentage of two or three a week on, on, yeah. on that one yeah zero virtually yeah so we covered recurrence we covered power goals for the rest of the gold uh you know yeah. how, how would you roughly cut them up do you cut them up into eras do you just say these are you know from a bunch of different years and they feel this particular way this one feels a little bit older than that chunk or you know there's a million different ways of cutting up a library uh, uh right. so right. how would you do it and how many other categories are there is it you know some do it complex with like uh, you know, it might be a 10 year span and there's the powers of that 10 year span. And then there's the other ones and they do that every 10 years. And, you know, that's right. to me, that would be complex, not totally good. Um, and then there's just a simple way. I'm just going to be doing it. This, 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 because that, you know, we're playing so few songs and they're turning so fast that, um, you know, complexity only makes it harder for the scheduling system to deal with it. I'm a simple programmer. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I, I like to keep things very, very simple. And, you know, I'm not one of these guys that go, you know, we're going to play our songs every 3.6 hours. And, you know, I, I, I've just never thought like that. Um, you mm -hmm. know, maybe because I was, I, I was at best a C math student, but, um, <laughs> you know, I, I like simplicity. If you look at any of my music uh, software setups, uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, you know, typically I'll do currents, I'll do recurrents, uh, I'll do 80s powers and 80s uh, uh, secondaries. Um, and, and then I'll, what, what I like when I test, uh, when I uh, sort a music test, what yeah. I'll typically do is, you know, I want to know what the median score is on this test, what the, what, the, what the average score is on this test. And I'll usually plug that into the filter, you know, in the software. And I'll say, okay, out of 700 songs, 150 of them tested above average. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And then I'll say, okay, well, maybe I want a few more. So, so how much under the average do I have to go? But what I'll, what I'll, what I'll first do is, is identify the good song and then I'll slice them into the categories and say, okay, you know, we ended up with this many currents and this many recurrents. We ended up with this many songs from the nineties, this many from, and the, and the nineties is the most brutally unpopular decade of all the decades <laughs> right, uh, right i mean i i would i i would dare anybody to, to tell me you can find more than 20 songs from the 90s a test uh or 25 songs from the 90s the test um yeah it's it, you know you just see it in test after test after test i'm always thinking about uh, you know are we doing this right you know could, could i be doing this better mm -hmm. um you know i i'm one of the guys that wakes up every day and i'm i'm open to learning you know so so lately, though, what I've, I've been doing a lot is I'll get that body of 90s and 2000s and, 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 and put them up on the screen. Mm -hmm. And I'll say they're, they're all good. They've all got good scores. 
you know, maybe some are a little bit better than others, but they've all got good scores. Mm -hmm. And and I'll make my powers the most recent of that group. So the powers yes. might be, the powers might be the ones from say 2017 till about 2005, for instance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The secondaries are 2005 through 1990. Hang on one second. Hang on, hang on one second. So if the, for those of you watching, that's a power category that's 12 years of that, that's comprising 12 years. So just bear that in mind. This section of what you're doing right now, Gary, uh, this is awesome for somebody who's trying to understand programming because this is that nuts and bolts that when you go to a NAB or whatever and somebody's speaking, no one ever goes into it ever. You know, like, right. you know, like and, stance over somebody's shoulder and go, let's do this. Let me tell you what the deal. You know, so, yeah. So, yes, right. So. And, and there's and there's another side to it. OK, so, you know, then, you know, you can set up your power goal by saying, OK, uh, I'm going to first isolate my currents. I'm going to isolate, you know, the, the 15 recurrents that I might need. <laughs> right, right. And, and and then I'm going to take I'm going to take everything else and that, that tested above average mm -hmm. and. Uh, there's two ways to, 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 to set up the power gold and secondary. Okay. One school of thought is I don't give a damn when the song is from within that group. If it's got a more powerful score, it's going to be a power. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your powers could end up having songs from 1990 as well as songs from 2016. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And, and your secondaries could have, songs from the 90s as you know so they could they, they would be equal um i kind of like the decade control for powers yes a yes. little bit because it definitely first of all okay my fail safe okay my net is that they're all good songs you know there's not a lot of red on on on, on my computer screen when i look at these songs they're all good it's just, you know, where do I want to put them in the painting um, and, and how do I want to lay them out? So lately I've been leaning towards uh, putting, you know, saying, OK, I've got 100 songs. I need 50 powers and I need 50 secondaries. So the first 50 are, you know, and every market different. It may go down to 2008. It may go down in some markets to 2006, mm -hmm. whatever it is. So this way, I feel like my hour is kind of balanced arrow wise and, and I still am playing the best songs. Here's where the problem comes. The more categories you have, and this is important, especially if we have some new upcoming, you know, programmers watching this. It's one thing to say, okay, I have X songs here. I have, you know, my powers are laid out by era, whatever. But the minute you start plugging rules with artist separation, tempo, sound coding, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, you know, that really, you know, you know, that's where your music program, you know, really starts to go, you know, a, a little wonky. Yeah. Uh, b because you know you're saying well i you know i don't want two uh, uh harder rock songs in a row i don't want you know i don't want uh, 18 pop songs in a row i want to break it up with an urban or a dance or i want to break it up with a you know an occasional maybe even country feeling you know type song so that's why i feel that the fewer the categories the easier i'd rather have the sound flow properly Mm -hmm. and 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 not worry about the score you know all that much as long as i know they're all good songs i think back to my pb days and and some of the guys that i worked with would tell you that i used to drive them crazy because you know it was pre-computer pre so much of the technology that we have today that i was always changing the clock and the system and you know you know we're going to have a's and b's and d's and and, and whatever so um, you know, I think that's kind of like an ongoing uh, a process. And if I find a, if I get a program director who is willing to go on that ride with me, um, we'll have a good time, you know, mm -hmm. you know, messing, you know, messing around with their system to, to really, you know, maximize it. Like I've got a couple of stations who have a category called, uh, they're called monsters. And the, the monsters are um, pretty much era free. They are just like the top, 10 songs in that music test no no matter what no matter. era yeah okay and yeah. they play on the they play on the top of the hour so if there's 10 of them oh. you know, you know that every hour you know you're going to kick off the top of your hour with a monster song yeah um you know and and, and what have you so i mean you know every station has a little different system i i would rather have a, a uh, an hour you know that has flowed well tempo wise has had a nice 
variety of different types of sounds in the music than I would saying, um, you know, the average score of this hour was, you know, you know, 5.6, you know, exact, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm always the kiss guy, you know, keep it, you know, keep it simple, stupid, you know, it's not rocket science. You probably appreciate this. And uh, I, I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure exactly what he did, but Steve Goldstein, you know, probably know Steve. I, I would, I'm of sure. course. Of yeah, and, and he was a uh, you know the PD at WNIC when I was there as a as a jock. And um, what Steve, going back to what you were just talking about, Steve would go in uh, every weekend, like on a Friday, and he would take a ton of the music and just move categories every single Friday. He would do that. Uh, he would he would go in and you know would go into the powers and grab a bunch of them out, put some other ones in. He had a pretty tight list going, but you never had the feeling that it was tight because stuff that was spinning faster would come to the top. It would be there for, I don't know, a week, week and a half and goodbye. And then it would drop down again. You know what I mean? It, you, it was constantly going like this, uh, whatever was turning fast, even though the universe was pretty small. I, I just marvel at that. That was the first time I ever saw anybody do that. You know, you, you know, live and learn by what you see. You're like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, and obviously the station had a great number. So, you know, clearly it worked. Um, you know, yes, uh, yes. Let's move to, um, to air talent. For me, you kind of have air talent that's, very much sticks out on a radio station. And then there's ones who, and I mean this in a really good way, you know, they ride the radio station. They are a companion, like you're talking about. They are entertaining, but they they never get in the way of the station. They don't stop it down enough that um, they take precedent over the radio station. You know, uh, AC stations, what's the main way to go of those two? And again, obviously there might be somebody who's amazing and I'm not talking about morning shows either. Talent is a, is, is so subjective. Yeah. Uh, you know, really, you know, and I've always, uh, look, I love, I, I think radio, this jockeys on, on the, the talent on radio is what radio is all about. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's what's, it's what separates a radio station. Um, you know, uh, again, going back to, my formulative years i don't know if i could tell you a lot about what songs were on wabc in 1967 <laughs> right. but i can sure t i can sure tell you right. i can sure tell you the disc jockeys that i used to love to listen to on that station those are the guys that all these years later i still remember but you know and and I, but, but if you said to me well gary what was the number one song in 1967 um you know, I, I, I couldn't tell you that, but I could tell you that, oh my God, those, those radio stations, you know, they were clearly my best friend back in the day. Uh, Great way to like look that. at it. And I have been so blessed with jocks over the years. When I look back at some of the stations I programmed um, uh, from Providence uh, to uh, uh, Boston and of course in, in Detroit, I mean, they were all awesome talents and they each had their own personality, but they they all fit into the radio station. So I guess to answer your question, I look for jocks that that have a certain a certain something about them, but but they all will fit into my radio station. And I will I will tell you when I get criticized for this a lot, okay? I mean, I get beat up on social media, you know, when this subject comes up a, a lot. I can tell if I like somebody or not within 15 to 30 seconds. 100%. 100%. Yeah. They either you know, got I mean, it or they don't, whatever that it I, is. Yeah. What, 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 you know, and, and for anybody who, you know, is out there watching this, um, you know, you know, you might think I'm difficult or I, I could come up with some other words, but I, I, I will tell you when I hit that, when I, when I get that file and I hit that button, most of them don't make it past 15 seconds. <laughs> and I, I, and I will tell you that if, if the air check that I'm listening to, <laughs> if the air check, <laughs> starts with a <laughs> with a with a phone call i'm out if i hit that button and i hear hey marcy what do you think about I, i'm out i'm done here's the bottom line you know you got between 15 and 30 seconds to, to get my attention and if you get my attention there's a good chance you're going to get that job mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent. almost the same thing goes for music in a music test or not a music test but in a music you know you're, you're judging new music you you, you know you pretty much know pretty quickly. Yeah, that's probably going to be a hit song. Or in a music I'll... test, yeah, you got seven seconds in a music in a, yeah. in a music test. Yeah, you know? yeah. But I mean, when I, when I put an air check on, you know, I mean, I, I just know, I just feel it. You know, I will tell you that when I look back to some of the greatest jocks that I've worked with over the years, uh, whether it was Tyler, 
Howard Hoffman, Don Geronimo at Pro FM. I heard that air check and I said, I've got to have this guy. Mm -hmm. and, and and it was, you know, when I heard J.J. Walker, who's on, on uh, yeah, JJ, uh, yeah. On, on Sirius XM now, yes. uh, when I heard J.J., uh, oh, my God, I, I just had to. I, I, I mean, I, I literally put his cassette in the machine and I was on the phone with him probably 60 seconds later. And, mm -hmm. and that's how I that's how I am today. You know, 15, 20 seconds. And, and, and I'm not saying, yeah. by the way, that is not an indication that you're not good. It's just an indication that it's not going to work for me for this particular job. Yeah. In, in, very, in, in many ways, you're casting like for a movie, you know, and uh, Jack Nicholson doesn't fit in this movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, I mean, you're, very, you're in the same vein. All right. Let's switch gears just a little bit, Gare. Um, you, you obviously are a consultant. You've done it for a ton of different years. You are encountering lots of different PDs. From your perspective, when you're working with PDs who are somewhere in the mid-range of time doing it or early on, what do you wish that they knew that you find that you always kind of usually have to keep pointing out to them or trying to teach them? What's that thing that a young PD should be looking for that they need to know? Hmm. Tough question. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it is. Here's what I'll say about that. Um, for a young PD, at least with my PDs, yeah, I, I want them to understand that I don't want their job. I just want to help make them look good. And so what, what I really work overtime is developing my relationship with the program director to let, to let him know that I don't want any of the credit for his success. Uh, I always tell my program directors, my job is to make you look good. I said, and if yeah. I don't get, I said, if I don't get any of the credit, that's at, that's how I want it to be. Once I get over that hill and I establish that trust with a program director, mm -hmm. um, they're very comfortable in, in, in listening to what I have to say. And they're very comfortable knowing that I'm, I'm really saying it for, you know, to help them. Pat, I don't mind uh, a young PD who needs to learn a lot. What I mind are PDs who need, have a lot to learn, but don't know it. Right. For sure. If I look at my group of stations that I work with, I have the majority are great relationships. I can call these guys and, you know, we end up sometimes talking about everything but radio. Uh, on our, <laughs> our calls, I'll, I'll get off the phone call and I'll say, oh, my God, I, I should have a Ph.D. after, you know, I should have like a psychiatrist degree, <laughs> you know, uh, I see myself as a teacher. I see myself as a coach. Uh, I see myself as a a, a a support person to make my radio, my, my program directors look good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's talk about morning shows. Um you know, and this is like a huge, you know, this is, a, you know, a huge topic and you know, to try to just sort of narrow it down. Um, if somebody's looking for a morning show, obviously you're going to try to get the best, you know, the best show that you can get and or, or build the best show that you can get. I mean, that goes without saying. I always wonder. And so, I, you know, I've been asking a lot of uh, PD, you know, who are doing this like you're doing it. It, for, for the, and, and now for specifically for an AC format, there's different types of morning shows, you know, that that the way they're physically built, there's the zoo thing with a whole bunch of people. There's Jeff and Jer. So it's two people. There's you know, Harper and Gannon, two people. There's a, you know, a million different Bob and Tom, two people. There's there's that there's there's one person with sort of like surveillance people around them that they can bounce off of. But it's primarily the main person. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, with, with a, a little bit of, a little bit of people around them, I guess, as opposed to a, a zoo type thing w of, of all the stations that you work with and, you know, and, that you've seen for AC, is there anyone that seems to work better than the others? Again, I, I you know, that's kind of a market by market thing, but I, I will tell you this, that I think most AC stations, number one, uh, listeners expect a good amount of music. Uh, mm -hmm. on, on that on that morning show in mornings what's a good and what's a good amount of music uh, how, how many songs at least eight, eight songs an hour at okay least eight, eight an hour yeah okay. at least Great. eight an hour thank you um yeah. any anywhere between eight and ten an hour uh mm -hmm. is really really important I, you know what i kind of like uh, the combination i like the most is uh a male and a female mm -hmm. and nine times out of ten if not nine and a half times out of ten when you have a male and a female uh, the female is more popular than the guy, even though the guy may be the lead. 
Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I will tell you that uh, um, uh, I've worked with some of the biggest morning shows in our co- in the country, and one in particular, and I'm not going to mention names. Um, it was the lead was a guy, and he had a whole ensemble uh, 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 in there with him in the morning, and the girls were much more popular than he was. Right. That's who pops out in the focus groups. You know, you know, so-and-so said, she said, yeah, yeah, I know. I've seen that many, many times. Interesting perspective, because as you're mentioning, I'm going, yeah, I can think of four of those things off the top of my head. No problem. Yeah. Uh, where, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I, I mean, this was a, a, a multi-million dollar morning show, but, but, you know, the guy really kind of kept the whole thing going. Yeah, and, no, for know, sure. Yeah. I like them to be affable and be likable be good morning companions, um, and be very open to, if they're going to do content, making sure they're doing good content. Because morning radio has some awful content going on. Yeah. It's just, I mean, when I hear, you know, pop news, I'm just going, I mean, I, I, every research project I look at, they don't, and AC radio listeners are not into pop news. They don't care. Yeah. You know? And maybe, maybe they don't care because they're getting it somewhere else. I don't know. But, uh, but yet, these morning shows migrate right over to it. So last question then is a hypothetical. I'm doing this to see what you would do. It's just the pure radio thing. Here's the situation. Tell me what you would do. You win the Powerball, you win $50 million and you get all 50. They don't take taxes for some reason. I don't know. So you have $50 million now and you go, okay, well, I want to make sure that my life is good here, you know, and, and my wife and kids and stuff. So you take 20 and you pull it out and you stick it into something treasury bills. So you're, you and generations are cool for life. Now you have 30 million left. You buy a $15 million radio station in the market of your choice. It is in the format that you want. You can do anything you want with it. All you want it to do is this. You want it to break even. You don't care if it makes any money. Okay. Because you still have another 15 million. All right. In addition to the 20, you just want it to break even and you want to make sure that it's still there when your grandkids are running through the halls going, my granddad got this. You know, what would you do that would be different than radio does now? The first thing I would do is I would figure out what format I was going to go with. Yeah. Uh, because if I want to break even, I've got to have a format that will be able to generate some revenue uh, and what have you. Yeah. So w- once I figured that one out and I, I would probably do a couple of research projects maybe in the marketplace because I had because I could I have the money, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, to, to, to figure that out uh, after I found out the format. Um, uh, and, and I would want to choose a format that a would was going to work and b that I kind of liked uh, and I would enjoy doing. For sure. Um, uh, third, uh, I would immediately after I knew the format, uh, I, I would go out and, and 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 try to find my core people. Obviously, uh, you know, on on the revenue side and on the programming side, mm-hmm. um, and and then I would say, guys, we're going to be live twenty four seven. Okay, so that's let's different. Go and I'd want to go out and hire the best guys and move them into the marketplace. Uh, no voice tracking, no remote. Uh, they're going to be in my studio. At that point, uh, I would just start to fly the station. You know, I'd I would do my my music testing and I would uh, get get all my imaging and my jingles because you know money is not an object here. So you know, yeah, uh, yeah. I could I could I could go down to Dallas and you know buy a hundred cuts and it would it wouldn't it wouldn't matter for for imaging. I'd hire the best imaging voices. I'd hire a lot of imaging voices. Uh, you know, I'd hire my, my, I'd hire my favorites and, and, and bring them in for different reasons. First and foremost, most important, I would, I would do the research and then I'd hire a live air staff and I'd hi- I'd have guys who were only worked on the weekends. I'd be looking for part-timers again. Wow. That's a, and I, and I'd have, I'd have a hell of a time with that radio station. Yeah, no, for sure. It'd be fun. You just described uh, the eighties, <laughs> but, but in a, in a totally good way. And, uh, uh, and you would probably, I would assume that you would probably do really well that you would actually not just break it even you probably be cranking money i would think maybe what i'll leave you with pat um yeah uh, it's a great a great story i've got three children and uh my youngest Corey berkowitz yeah uh, is is i think has a lot of me in him a lot of uh, a lot of me and I, I thought he might have gone to radio in the beginning, but he ended up going into the music business. Uh, he is currently the senior vice president of A&R at the Saban Music Group in Los Angeles. Uh, nice. he, he, he's very sharp with music and all. But he said to me a while ago, a, a good number of years ago, 
uh, he had just heard an air check of me from uh, Pro FM. And, and, and he's always giving me a hard time about my air checks. He goes, you, you know, he, he just really kind of busts my chops about my air checks a little bit. Yeah. And he heard, he heard this air check and he said to me, Dad, I want to talk about this air check. And I was like, oh, okay, here we go. He goes, no, no. He goes, no, Dad. He goes, it was unbelievable. God, that station was so good. And you were so good. And the, the reverb and the jingles and the music and the DJs. He goes, you guys were great. He goes, why can't radio be like that today? And I was like, uh, how do you answer that question? I don't think he's alone. Every once in a while, you'll hear a radio station and, you know, the guy, the, you know, it, it, usually it's a guy from, from the back that area, but the, the guy would be a little bit older. Um, and uh, say Broad, Broadway, Bill Lee. Um, and, uh, you know, and he's doing the style and everything from, from, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, right on through. And you go like, well, he's got really good numbers and people really seem to like him. What if you had an entire station doing this? You, you know, which is what you're describing, you know, it's like, again, why doesn't somebody take one station and try it and take the shot and see, like, maybe your son is, uh, you know, got a, you know, a thousand percent correct. And, you know, he's just oh, hearing yeah. it as a, as an average person. Wow. Yeah, definitely. So, definitely. Yeah. So thanks for this. I really, really appreciate you doing it and, uh, you know, and, and giving your expertise and all your experience on AC radio because uh, it is uh, sizable. Mm -hmm. So I hope everybody got uh, got something out of that. And uh, um, and again, um, I'll put links to your uh, to Gary's great, uh, great. Uh, uh, website and also to uh, to Gary's YouTube channel below. Sign up for my free programming AC programming newsletter too. It's absolutely free, so it's uh, good. It's got some good stuff in there. Okay, awesome. All right, thanks, Gary. You take care. Pat, thank you so much. Gary Berkowitz on AC, the AC format. And if you really want to know that format, I can't think of too many better ways of spending an hour to try to learn it than these last two lessons with Gary. If you like the lesson, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to get more of these and also that notification bell. That way you, know, you get an email saying, hey, there's a new lesson. And uh, so you know there's a new one there. I try to put them up every Sunday night, Monday morning at midnight. So again, you know, thank you. I really appreciate it that you're watching. Again, subscribe if you, if you like what you're seeing. And until the next time. Oh, one more time. If you're wondering what the S is, Singapore. We went there, visited. Awesome. Actually, great radio stations in Singapore. Really, really good. And it's an amazing country, an amazing city. It's a city country. Uh, but I digress. Until the next time. See ya.